All right, what is going on, financial movers? I hope you are just rocking out this week. Tonight, I'm gonna be talking with you about Intel Corporation, ticker symbol INTC, the chip company. They just closed today's session at $62.57, and now they are down 1.7% after just reporting earnings. So earnings just came out, and they have an EPS beat by 25 cents, and they beat on revenue. So it's interesting to see that the stock is dropping in post market. So the company did report revenue of $19.7 billion. That is down 0.7% year over year, but still beat analyst expectations by $1.75 billion. So nice B, not surprising to see that revenues were down slightly year over year because it was a pretty difficult year, or what uh, many would consider a difficult year for Intel last year. Now, the company did have some positive news they are increasing their quarter two guidance. So they are expecting revenues to be uh, between 17.8 billion to 17.84 billion, which would be an increase about a hundred and million dollars uh, at least. And then they do expect full year guidance. They raised full year 2021 guidance and are expecting revenues of $77 billion. It's looking not bad over there at Intel. Uh, I am interested in breaking down these revenues. So we're going to do exactly that break down their total earnings and then jump into the technical chart at the end of this analysis and give you some really key support and resistance areas in Intel stock. So before I get started, I'm going to ask you to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification button for me so you never miss out on another analysis. And let's just jump into those numbers at Intel stock. Now, before I do jump into the numbers of Intel, I do want to point out on like a, on a charting page that I have Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, and Taiwan Semiconductor all on a price to earnings. And it's just wild to see how low of a price to earnings Intel is uh, compared to all these other companies. So they're only at a 12.8 on a price to earnings and NVIDIA is up at an 89. AMD is at a 39 and Taiwan Semi is at a 28. And it just kind of like, in my opinion, shows that maybe this could be a good deal for stock. Maybe it's really undervalued. It's just interesting to see how low of a PE Intel trades at whenever they are the world's largest semiconductor company reporting those revenues of uh, nearly 77 billion dollars in 2020, which is way above the next person in line, the next company in line, which is Samsung reporting revenues at $52 billion. So the largest semiconductor company in terms of revenue is trading at a very considered to be a good sale compared to the other semiconductor companies. Now, breaking down these numbers over at Intel, they got their consolidated Statements of income coming in. They got their Q1 2021 over Q1 2020. So they got total net revenue coming in at 19.6 billion, down that 0.7% from 19.8 billion uh, last year. Cost of sales coming in, actually coming in a little bit higher from 7.8 billion up to 8. $8 billion. So cost of sales going up, net revenues decrease slightly, bringing gross margin in at $10.8 billion, down from $12 billion, but still really solid margins over there. Now, the company does have operating expenses. They got R&D that came up from $3.2 billion to $3.6 billion. They did cut down on their uh, marketing general and administrative from $1.5 billion to $1.3 billion, but they had this new re restructuring and other charges. So if you remember, Intel did get a new CEO that came in and they're doing restructuring, which cost them $2.2 billion, up from $162 million. So that really put a damper on how much they were bringing in in total operating profit. So operating expenses came in uh, up to $7.1 billion from $4.9 billion, which really drove operating income down from $7 billion to $3.6 billion. But this restructuring fee, this restructuring charge is only 
only a one-time charge, so do keep that in the back of your mind. If that really causes investors to sell off, I do believe that could provide a good buying the dip opportunity because this is a one-time charge. It's not a reoccurring thing. So net income's coming in way lower from Q1 last year to Q1 now because of that restructuring fee. So net income's in at $3.3 billion, down from $5.6 billion. Not a surprise there. Same thing, EPS are dropping from $1.33 down to $0.83. Cents. So the revenue is still coming in strong. It's just this restructuring fee that ate at those net incomes. And I think that really will provide for a good buying opportunity if one is presented, if, if investors kind of look at that in the wrong way. Now, I do want to point out the balance sheet at Intel. It is incredibly strong. It is really strong. And that is why they can afford to have a restructuring fee. So they got their March 27, 2021 over December 26, 2020 on the balance sheet. They got cash and cash equivalents coming in, uh, decreasing a little bit from $5.8 billion down to $5.1 one billion short-term investments going up uh, to from 2.2 billion to 2.4 billion and then they have a lot of other short-term investments uh just total current assets so total current assets coming in at 45.7 billion dollars okay that is a lot and just taking a look at their total current liabilities those only come in at 24.1 billion dollars so total current assets outpacing those total current liabilities by a lot short-term debt on that liabilities page on their total current liabilities is only at 2.6 billion dollars so their cash right now can easily pay off short-term debt without a hitch looking really good on the balance sheet and that's not all of their assets total assets they have a lot of property plant equipment so total assets in at 150 billion dollars with total liabilities only coming in at about 71 billion dollars after you take off total stakeholders equity so even their debt is only at 33 billion dollars and that may sound like a lot but total current assets outpace their total debt so the balance sheet is looking looking really strong at Intel. Revenue's coming in. They do some restructuring over there. They're expecting to have better times ahead, and they seem to be trading at a discount compared to a lot of other companies, uh, other semiconductor companies on the market. And one last thing, Intel does pay a pretty attractive dividend of 2.18%, which is a dividend rate of $1.39. So you don't see that with these other semiconductor companies, but you do see it with Intel. So getting over to the technical charts, I am actually interested in being a buyer of Intel. So right now they're trading at 61.77 in post market and they are trading in this long consolidation that they've really been forming since about 2018 so they have strong resistance at 57 and then they have strong support down at about 40 Four dollars, and it's tested that forty-four dollars about five times from 2018, and also tested the fifty-seven dollars multiple times from 2018, getting as high up as uh, seventy dollars. And then in 2020, and then it just was up at $68 in April this month. And that's an interesting spot because just really long term back at the dot com bubble, uh, Intel actually has an all time high up at $74. So it's getting some really strong resistance right at that $70 mark. And I wouldn't be surprised to watch that be even longer resistance. Who knows how many people are still holding on to those Intel shares, but uh, apparently a lot. And maybe there's several causing this strong resistance so for the near term though I am interested in picking Intel up and my first level I would be interested in picking Intel up at is about the $57 mark which has proven to be strong resistance in the past but maybe it could hold I wouldn't just immediately buy it at 57 I would like to see how it's trading if it's basing out on 57 support but if it were I would be interested in buying it there at 57 the next level I would like to 
to buy Intel at is 52, kind of in the in the middle of that consolidation range. $52 has proven to be so, uh, resistance as well. So that could be next level support. And ultimately, I mean, if Intel could really drop down and hit this $44 mark, where it's tested it multiple times since 2018, that would be an immediate buy, in my opinion, for Intel. That would actually put it under a 200-day moving average. And Intel does a pretty solid job of respecting that 200-day moving average since it came out of a long-term downtrend in 2010. So uh, the 200-day moving average is at $50. If it could drop below that like it did in November of last year for a short period of time, definitely a solid buying area. Uh, and, and that 50 dollars on that 200 day moving average is actually really close to that uh that support line that i like at 52 dollars so yeah, that's what i got for intel if you're bullish on intel be sure to hit that thumbs up button hit the subscribe button and hit that notification button for me and see you all next analysis